All right, all right. Welcome back to another video. My name is Brian Nestline, clairvoyant, intuitive, spiritual card reader, psychic, here to deliver <laughs> information with a daily oracle card, tarot card type reading. Now, look, this type of a reading is for our spiritual identity. It's for our spiritual body. It's for us who are living as spiritual beings in the human world. Those of us that have woken up spiritually, what does that mean? That means that we have recognized that we are not just our personal self or our physical self. No, we recognize we are more than our personal self, more than our thoughts, more than our emotions. We're more. What are we? We're that strange consciousness, that little bit of awareness that is always active, always living, always present, looking through us. Here we go. Now we're going to pull this one little mini free card for us to think about for our spiritual food for today. What is this? The mind card. Uh, look how crappy our mind can get, right? When we're in the day-to-day -day world, uh, burning up, exploding, bunch of firecrackers, bunch of dynamites. Uh, when we have anxiety, when we are emotionally charged because of the situations, the words, the circumstances, the information, information on the news, information in our personal life, information that people are delivering to us, that, are, that they're presenting to us in our personal lives, when things don't go exactly as we hope in that moment, or when things make it tougher, seemingly tougher for us in the moment. Boom, 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 burn on up, explosions. This is that experience, ouch, of being in the world, being caught up as a human being only, or forgetting that we are a spiritual being. This is what it looks like when we're resentful and angry and uh, uninspired. More just like a pinball in a pinball machine. Boom, 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 back and forth. So how are we going to diffuse this bomb before it explodes, right? <laughs> and causes our personal life to be a mess for us to do things that we regret. Words that we want to be able to take back and can't. Ugh. Well, the first thing we're going to do is try to get down to this little bandage zone here. What's that? We got to get calm. We got to get stable and try to clear off some of this intensity with some of this blank slate, white, bandagey looking part of the card. A deep, deep breath. Oh, and an exhale. Another deep breath. Oh my gosh, take those deep breaths. Focus on breathing. Let life go. Find a way to get into that blank canvas space that space that's free of the world, that's free of the world, that's empty. Got to get into our empty mind, into our empty nowhere land. The breathing can diffuse the strong emotions and reactions that are all set up to fire off. It allows us to douse the fuse. Throughout the day, removing this outer world by closing your eyes and taking a few slow deep breaths going into that little bird's nest within with your little blanket of solitude where you can really get into what the card is showing now this blue one eye right here this blue and white third eye space this calm serene working part of our spiritual identity the third eye. Now, when we talk about the third eye, we're talking about the indigo, we're talking about a chakra. Chakras are just ways of describing our spiritual body. Since our spiritual body is not a physical body, we're not going to use words like nose, arm, leg. No, we're going to use words that represent energy points. And we're going to use the meanings that represent how to use or operate what the energy points are good for are good for and the third eye energy point that indigo one that is good for <laughs> retreating from the world going into your secret place your mind your secret place where no one else can go jesus said it not to quote the bible but eh, why not he said go into your secret place and up there in there ask 
the Father, God, Source, Universe, you know. Ask Cosmic Consciousness or the Land of Anything is Possibleness, your imagination. Go in there and ask. Go in there and imagine. Go in there and find comfort. Go in there and find solace from the world. From the world of your day-to-day -day life. From the world of all the emotions that are firecrackering up. From the world of all the informations that are making your mind turn, making your mind spin, making your thoughts pop, making anxiety start to tell a story of who knows what, who knows what. And isn't it like that? Something happens spontaneously in our environment and we react. <gasps> a strong emotional reaction. <gasps> a strong disturbance. And then <gasps> that power packed gasp fires off these rockets of a storyline, a storyline. Our wheels turn and we start to get 10 minutes down the road, 20 years down the road even. We start to conjure up stories that can be anxious, that can be fearful, that can be feeling like we're threatened, catastrophizing, all of this type of stuff. If that's happening to you, it's going to be important Again, to come out of that space, to dial down all the emotions, because it's the emotions that are fueling, like electricity, they are powering the thoughts, the stories. They're powering the fearful storyline. So we wanna pull the plug on the emotions. That's the first step. When we are emotionally disturbed by information or people or behaviors or circumstances or a letter in the mail or some kind of news on the TV or whatever, we want to pause, move our awareness off the world, close it up, go in here into our third eye space of freedom where we can remember, oh my God, that's right. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Oh, that's right. That's right. I never really <laughs> am in danger inside here because I'm a spirit. I'm not from this world. I'm my kingdom, like Jesus said, uh, quoting Jesus again, Jesus is like, dude, my kingdom, it's from this other world, this other place. And where I'm going, you can't go. You can't go. The world cannot go where you can go, which is up here in your secret mind space, your consciousness space, your spiritual playground of anything is possible, Bill. That's where we live. That's who we are. That's what we, that's what we can do when the world and its people are disturbing to us, when the information disturbs us. So we take the breath because the breath is like a fuel pod packed, boom, rocket ship ride. It's the exhaust and the fuel at the same time. The rocket ship ride outside of the world into the inner space of our mind, of our mind to that gray, gray and white blank canvas space where we're unhooked unhinged, untethered from anything that's going on. And now up here in this other place, this other dimension, now that we've paused and breathed and gotten calm, we can really soak in that breath, use it to filter it through our body if we're feeling ah, tense. Ow. The deep breath, holding it in a little bit flooding our blood with oxygen, releasing endorphins, the natural opiate receptors blowing open, boom, the opiate receptors will blow open and they will drip down a little bit of yummy, yummy peace. And before you know it, ah, the kinks are all worked out. You remember in who you really are as that one eye, spiritual eye, spiritual being, having a temporary, always changing, huh, exciting, adventurous, sometimes scary, human adventure, human adventure. And that you can easily control the steering wheel of your life if you recognize that information can sometimes cause our emotions to explode in reaction. And that power surge can push our words into storylines that are fearful or anxiety-ish. When you know this simple truth and fact, <laughs> you can then just use the natural thing you were born with. <gasps> Your breathing has been with you since the beginning. I'm using it to project my voice. So everything I do 
hinges on my breathing. I'm not alive without it as a human being. The breathing is the bridge between the two worlds, the world of the mortal zone and the world of the immortal zone. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas to us. And God breathed his life-giving breath into mankind. Eh, another Bible quote. What is this today? So use your breath for more than just <laughs> something that we don't think about. <laughs> use it as a best friend, your breath friend. Hey there, buddy. Thank you for keeping me alive, for keeping the fuel in the gas tank. As we learn to get more control over our breathing or using our breathing, we can control our emotional natures more. Then we're able to live bigger meaning that we have a bigger space around us so that it's like a buffer zone, right? So that when things come at us, we can move aside like Neo in the Matrix, dodge the bullets. That way, we'll have more time to think from our spiritual mind and less pushing and pulling around by the emotional reactions that happen in the world from the people and the situations and the circumstances. And by the way, none of these things are against us. They're all just expressing or pressing out what they in the moment <laughs> need to do, need to do. We are living in a, a big variety puzzle where people are adding new and unique iterations of life and expression into the world in front of us. And we don't want them to stop doing that, even if some of those puzzle pieces are sharp, ouch, and they hurt. We're willing to go through the human experience because of the high reward of being able to be that conscious being who can express new things into the world for the good of all, for the good of all. So, yeah, 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 yeah. The last part of the card here is the lips are so bright red. Why, why, why? They want to look like a heart. They really do, don't they? They want to tell you that love is the words that you speak in the world. Even if those words are <laughs> ouchy sometimes, the word itself is love. Because the word is what allows the light, the energy, the stories, even if they're scary stories or anxiety stories, the words allow the stories to be embodied with that emotional energy, that light, that light. And we are, at a very basic level, <laughs> light bringers. And we use our words, we use our love, our mouth, and our actions, and our actions, our bodies, our physical, mental, and emotional self. We use our self as a spiritual being, to bring new good things into the world, to bandage up, to bandage up anything that's broken and to really blossom this beautiful light for everyone. So thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel, right? I make videos every day, sometimes more than one. You'll get spiritual tips for your spiritual trip. Give me a comment below. Let me know what <laughs> stood out in this reading for you. Let me know what you're going through. Let me know whatever is on your mind to share. Comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, you'll get a notification whenever the videos come out. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.